Well, shares of Qualcomm are rallying in this final half hour of trading after the company announced it would be supplying Apple with 5G chips through 2026. It comes after analysts and Qualcomm itself expected Apple to create its own chips starting next year. For more, let's bring in Kevin Cassidy, Managing Director at Rosenblatt Securities. Thanks so much for joining us today, Kevin. Yes, thank you, Jacqueline. Thanks for inviting me on. It's our pleasure. So uh, it sounds like uh, from Qualcomm's perspective, this is a good gig if, it, if they can take it for another three years. Sure. Yeah, it's, um, you know, they, they try to set expectations as low as possible. Uh, I like that, that the management team does that to uh, just take the risk out that, OK, yeah, someday Apple will make its own modem. But I think this is the second or third time that it's been uh, renewed. We'll call it the supply agreement renewed for a couple more years. Yeah, and can you get, just give us a bit? I know you're not um, uh, an engineer per se when it comes to these uh, chips, but these modem chips. Can you, can you just give us a sense of, of what those are that Qualcomm is supplying for Apple? Because it, Apple is trying to figure out how to do this themselves, right? Right. Yeah. So it's um, you know. You, you, Apple makes its own processor, but then you need to get onto the 5G network or a 4G network or 3G. Um, but you have to get onto the cellular network. So it is a modem. It, it takes the digital data on the phone and put it onto the airwaves. Uh, and so, you know, you can think of the modem as when you put your phone into airplane mode, uh, that's what a phone is like without a modem. So uh, hmm. not much use. And, uh, you know, the modem is a very critical and very difficult uh, product to, to design. Interesting. Yeah, that's actually really helpful to understand it. Um, when you're thinking about um, just how big of a um, you know portion of Qualcomm's business Apple makes up, is it? It's roughly 20 percent of revenue. Uh, that's right, and that includes licensing fees. So even if uh, Apple makes their own modem, they would pay a licensing fee, you know, a couple dollars per phone uh, to uh, Qualcomm for inventing the network, having all the essential patents. For 5G, you know, and just to be uh, clear, this is on 5G. Uh, Qualcomm's on their sixth generation of these modems, so it's about every year they've been introducing a new modem. And you know, the 5G standard keeps moving forward. They keep adding on new features, which makes it difficult for someone that hasn't designed the first generation 5G. You know, it, it, you got to shoot way ahead of the duck and know hmm. what uh, new releases will be coming out. So it, it is a difficult task to try to keep up when you don't have the you know, first one out yet. So is there a possible world where uh, Qualcomm just keeps on pushing the technology forward and, and is able to hold on to Apple as a customer if, if they aren't able to sort of match what Qualcomm is doing? Yeah, that, that's my belief because, you know, Apple can't come out with an inferior uh, 5G modem. Uh, they, they have to have something that's at least as good as a Qualcomm modem and then hopefully from Apple's point of view even better. But uh, it's just very difficult to do once someone has a lead like they have uh, and Qualcomm sells to you know, most of the other market also. They, they have dominant market share. So even Samsung stopped making their own modem. Uh, then they use, they rely on Qualcomm. And uh, Oppo, one of the largest Chinese manufacturers, uh, gave up on trying to make their own semiconductors also and are relying on Qualcomm. I was reading, uh, according to Qualcomm's filings today, that uh, the market share, though, that they're expecting to be um, supplying for Apple in the next couple of years is going to be diminishing. Is that, is that right? By 2026, they won't be, you know, the, the, you know, the sole supplier for Apple for these particular modem chips? Yeah, that's how they set the expectations that even when uh, Qualcomm makes their own modem, they'll still sell probably 20% of the uh, capacity that uh, that Apple will need. So they're just setting the bar low again. That, that they think even with uh, Apple making its own modem, that they'll still buy some from Qualcomm. Oh, okay. So that's even after the fact, after Apple, uh, if, if it is able to achieve that, that uh, they would still be um, a supplier. That's interesting. Um, when you're thinking about Qualcomm overall, is there anything else that investors should have on their radar these days? Well, we think it's very interesting that they are working with Meta to put generative AI on a, a smartphone or on a PC or even VR uh, AR glasses. 
right, on an automobile. So generative AI right now is mostly run in the data center and uses extremely a lot of power. And uh, when you can move it to the uh, edge of the network, which would be these handsets or PCs, it can run more efficiently and possibly faster You know, for, for um, some of the data you might be looking for. You, you wouldn't get the full data set, but uh, you know, we'll just see how it works out. Could be that 75% of the data you need, you don't need the full data set. So mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting play that Qualcomm will get in as a, an AI play also. That is interesting. And then just overall for the stock uh, for Qualcomm, where do you see it headed? Because it, it has been, um, I think it has been climbing quite a bit this year. Let me just double check, but maybe we can bring it up on the screen. What, what are your expectations? Well, we, we think it uh, can get back up to into the $150 range. It's had a tough year because of the uh, weakness in China, the mostly Android phones in China, um, you know, it, where expectations are for units to be down in double digit range, say uh, down 10, 12 percent. So uh, Qualcomm is has the major market share in the leadership or the flagship phones, you know, from Samsung, Oppo, Xiaomi, Vivo. Uh, honor uh, all these companies, but they're, you know, the, with the shutdowns and then a slow return to the economy in China, that's that's been hurting Qualcomm. Mm. Uh, we think that the inventory has been, is going to be depleted by the end of the year, and there's typically a refresh for the Chinese uh, New Year, say a refresh of new phones coming out, which we expect will be dominated by Qualcomm chipsets inside, uh, and we think that's when they can start making a comeback. We also think they have an interesting play into the PC market. The mm. new um, Windows 11 operating system allows for a CPU to run on an ARM processor natively, which hadn't, hasn't been available before. And uh, Qualcomm, we're expecting to have a very strong uh, product en entry into the PC space um, based on an ARM architecture. Okay.